Uh, as uh, Natalia just said, I am a member of a greater, uh, like, <laughs> really big and um, I think interesting team of researchers. Uh, we are working on the project named Unmemorialized Genocide Sites and their impact of, on collective memory, health, cultural identity, ethical, ethical attitudes and intercultural relations in contemporary Poland. The title is really uh, long and complicated. I wanted to present you our, uh, like, uh, well, the brochure we published just uh, in the middle of our research. We plan to elaborate it and publish it in English. For now it's only Polish, but as some of you speak Polish, I would like to uh, distribute it. So that is about our uh, research. We assume that uh, these unmemorialized sites play a vital role in the process of identity formation and in fashioning attitudes towards the past, uh, being only apparently removed from social and cultural circulation. For this reason, we call them non lieu de mémoire, it's Roma syndicate. Mm -hmm. and for the last uh, year and a half, together with Dr. Jakub Mochowski, um, I focused on our, my inquiry, our inquiry on Holocaust-related sites uh, in the Miechów County, nearby Krakow. As some of you may know, Miechów County County is one of uh, those who are chosen uh, by the Polish Center for, for Holocaust Research uh, in the project that recently resulted in the extensive publication Dalej is not. Dariusz uh, Lubianka examined the Miłów district, so I'm very happy to have this material <coughs> be gathered. Uh, I myself with Jakubowski, uh, we are doing a field work uh, focused on the com contemporary situation. Memory there. So those projects can kind of, um, uh, well, complement complement one each other. Mm, okay, uh, I would I would like to speak today about commemoration processes concerning some cases in that area where villagers helped Jewish poles to survive and failed, both Jews and non-Jews were exposed and killed. Interviewing the locals about those events, visiting sites where they happened, um, and <coughs> participating in commemoration ceremonies, I observed, I observed different modes in which Christian beliefs and rituals affected the way people are thinking and behaving. I am also interested in the ages, agency of those who represent institutional aspect of religion that is dominant in contemporary Poland, the Catholic Church. Uh, as Alicja Bogbielska mentioned before, um, there is this important figure that I wish to in Poland. I would unfortunately not talk about him uh, personally, well, and, and his uh, <laughs> like uh, powerful um, like, making work. Well, I would like to say empire, but it's not very professional, so I'm hesitating how to call it. But I will actually talk about uh, his admirer like local Mihovian admirer of Rizik. So this is kind of uh, this uh, version of Polish Catholic Church. The first case I encountered uh, in Mimov County <coughs> during my research was Wierzbica. Uh, Polish family was killed there together with two Jews. And they were helping. Uh, in 1943. Although six people were mar murdered, today only four of them have a grave with their names on it. It is tended by the granddaughter of the Polish victims, who seems to have never acknowledged the presence of Jewish remnants in the area. Yet, when asked about the exact place of their, of their burial, she pointed one. So she, uh, and this is the place. Mm. They, uh, on the hill you, you can see up there, uh, there was a um, farm and it's now vanished uh, after the execution, like nobody lived there anymore. But now there is this uh, grave um, <coughs> published at the exact place where the Polish, like non-Jewish Polish bodies were buried. 
And it's not clear where exactly <coughs> the Jewish bodies are uh, buried. It's not. Uh, it's probable actually that uh, it's exactly the same place because it was January and probably nobody mm, had uh, wanted to dig two separate graves for the bodies. But the granddaughter that we were of uh, of the Piotr um, Książek. Uh, pointed to those bashes, like the Jews are laying somewhere there. So, <coughs> you know, it cannot be excluded, but it's, um, this is her story. And this is what uh, interests me. So, uh, I asked her, how would you feel if uh, the Jews were commemorated? And she responded, and I said, you can't have a grudge against those Jews, can you? Can you? Why not let him be commemorated? They were humans, too. Putting aside some complications connected with this story, uh, which is the case of every one of these kind of stories, uh, because there were uh, denunciation, I probably will talk about it later. Um, one can wonder how come that the proud descendant of the potential righteous among the nations feels practically no obligation to cultivate the memory of those for whom uh, her ancestors died, or even to respect their remnants. I am still at the beginning of reflecting on this past subject. Uh, today I would like to present uh, to you my first findings and kindly ask for some feedback and other questions. And I will focus on the case of Baranek uh, family that was already mentioned several times during this conference, but uh, I'm glad uh, never addressed the directly, so I will elaborate on the Baranek case in Siedliska. Uh, less than two months after the hunt in Wierzbica um, and nearby villages, less than 20 kilometers away, five members of Baranek family and four Jews were, they were hiding were killed. It's really 20 kilometers away, it's the same year in the same uh, area, area. The, reconstructions of, the reconstruction of events has been based on the testimonies, um, testimonies given by witnesses during trials in 1947 and 1971, and during conversations led by journalists and researchers. I won't go into details of what probably happened, or refer to differences between various <coughs> sources. In short, as a result of some kind of denunciation, a group of Germans came to Siedliska, found and killed four Jews. Then, uh, and I would like I would like to show you the like <coughs> uh, the, the oldest photo available of the of the house and the barn uh, somewhere uh, behind the house when where the, where it happened more or less. And here is the. The, ins the inside of the barn, um, and this photo has been taken like two weeks ago. It's a contemporary situation, but the place uh, remained more or less the same. Like those um, wooden elements of the barn are original, but you can see the um, hole in, the, in those uh, doors, and those doors now are exhibited in the Umas uh, Museum. I will show it to you later. <coughs> so, uh, inside the barn, uh, Vincente and Lucia Baranek were killed. Afterwards, they two sons. <coughs> the elder member of the family, Karazena, managed to hide and has been killed the day after. It's another sad story. First, oh, uh, first known material commemoration of those events were five white crosses drew with lime on the wooden fence inside the barn. Um, now there is only the like, fragments of this uh, fence and no crosses anymore. Each of the crosses represented each of the non-Jewish poles that, were, that has been murdered. With the permission of perpetrators, their bodies were buried on the Miehof Cemetery but without coffins or proper religious rituals that came afterwards. And this is the grave of Baranek family on the Mikhov Cemetery, and on the other side of the slide you can see the field where uh, the Jews were buried. 
it's not, uh, it's a uh, sure thing. <laughs> they were buried somewhere there. Our informer claims that about 10 years after uh, what happened, the site where was visible, the site where the Jewish victims uh, were buried. As the wheat were, was growing differently on the decaying bodies, more opulent or black, <coughs> as he claims in another conversation. Others argue that those bodies were exhumed by some Jewish organization a few years after the war. The information needs to be verified, as we couldn't obtain from our interlocutors any details, and it seems to be a story told by the locals to get rid of the image of buried but not rituals claimed sanctified Jewish bodies. There are several steps leading to today's memoscape of those events that needs to be briefly presented. In uh, April 1968, Zofia Olas writes the first article on the subject. Her reportage is published along with the opening piece by the chief editor of Życie Literackie, Władysław Machejek. Uh, in this piece, uh, Machejek defends Polish right to anti-Semitic policy of 1968. It's just a very brief summary. Um, Mahek was born in Harsznica, a village only five kilometers far from Siedliska, and it is highly probable that he knew the story and asked his co-worker to write it down, to strengthen his argument about the Poles being the righteous and, as such, immune to anti-Semitism. Well, mm, I don't have the time to analyze the article. You have to uh, trust me or, or look at it yourself. Uh, but <coughs> after today's discussion, I'm thinking that it was not maybe a question of Polish immunity to anti-Semitize, but the right to be anti-Semitic as well as, uh, as they are the righteous, right? In 2012, as you have already uh, heard about it, Polish National Bank issues collectible coin representing three families of Polish wrestlers. The same year, members of the latter family, Baranek, are honored the righteous among the nations title. And I would like to pay, draw your attention uh, on this um, <coughs> coin. You already saw it, but I think that the interesting thing to acknowledge is the representation of a Jew on, on the and this is, uh, well, and this is really like incarnation of some anti-Semitic uh, stereotypes as he is like um, small and some well, sneaking maybe. This is the way if he could be perceived, I think. And so surely he's like less important than the, the Pole on the, the Polish side. Like, I'm sorry, can you just show it? I see a mother and a child. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's not even visible. Yeah. <laughs> he's there. Yeah. 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 Uh, here the Barane family uh, are like put together in a kind of college and uh, as the official subtitle up, uh, under the picture in Nasz the like, conservative Catholic uh, nationalistic paper of mm -hmm. the music, of course, uh, it, it is there, it has been published and those Jews at the background uh, are identified as the, those who were hidden by Barones. It's kind of absurd as we are not even sure about the surname of those people and we, there are, maybe you noticed on my first slide there are like 10 versions of what their surname was. So to f identify the photos it would be really show you this picture, this is the Kowalski's family, and actually it's a proper photo that where on which the hidden uh, Jewish girl mm -hmm. is visible. And <coughs> it's the one, you know, um, in the circle. She's like 
uh, behind the glass, right? So there is actual representation of a hidden jewel connected to the Kowalski's family that could be used on this kind of uh, medal, probably, but it is not what was decided to do. Okay. Uh, this is Makova. I won't say much about it, just I wanted to show you the doors from the uh, barn in Sitchidiska. Uh, they're extraordinary as there are uh, marks of the bullets still visible on there. So that's why. Okay. The exhibition of those doors, metaphorically speaking, sealed the link between uh, these stories, <coughs> strengthening the position of the families as paradig paradigmatic for the national memory of Polish rescuers. All of them uh, are presented as traditional Catholic families, compounded of heterosexual couple and more than one child. Um, as you can see here, uh, the main website of the museum exposes biblical quotation about the Good Samaritan that has been found marked in the Ulmas copy of the Bible. The Barane family uh, gained recognition for both religious and social en engagement of its members. Vincente used to be the village leader and has been remembered as a de devotee. According to testimonies, the strong indicator of the fact he was hiding Jews uh, and he was tormented by it, he was afraid, was the fact that he neglected his religious obligations, namely he forgot to take off uh, his head inside the church. This is the fact that the villagers remembered. Um, much younger relative of Lucia, Piotr Skucha, became Catholic bishop and he has been working in the Diocese of Kielce uh, and the Mio County is a part of this Diocese, famous, uh, unfamous Diocese of Kielce. Bioskowa uh, has been educated in Lublin, Lublin, Rome and Jerusalem and specializes in biblical studies. He also wrote a piece about uh, Catholic doctrine about Judaism after Vatican II. And I will come back to his uh, writings later. Here you have, can see his publications. Um, I would also like to mention two memory entrepreneurs responsible for contemporary status of the family. <coughs> Alicia Stern, the Domo Baranek, married to a Jewish lawyer from Warsaw. She applied to Yad Vashem for the righteous title. And Michał Biernacki, married to Barbara de Domoskucha, a head of the Association for Monuments Restoration Lovers. It's like a very strange uh, name of this institution. He is. Uh, he's also a brother of Christian Biernacki, a Jesuit living in Krakow. Since 2012, uh, Michał Biernacki, together with the city authorities, and at the beginning of the Institute for National Remembers, Remembrance organizes commemoration ceremonies on the anniversary of tragic events. And the first of those uh, commemoration was held in 2012. Uh, and the first one <coughs> included a mass co-performed by Bishop Spucha and a visit in the Hodówki Woods nearby Miepu. Uh, the place where hundreds of Jews were murdered in 1942, and this fact has been represented by a huge stone that serves as a kind of cenotaph, cenotaph, a synecdochic grave for all the unmemorialized <coughs> genocide sites in the whole country. As for now, this gesture has never been repeated. On the screen, you can see the next year's invitation. <coughs> from 2013, the Jewish victims are alluded by Hebrew letters and their probable surname visually echoed, echoing Barane, right? The both finger is one of the options. In 2014, um, the Hebrew was, is visible only on the Yad Vashem medal reproduced on the cover. In the Catholic daily paper Nasciennik uh, was this uh, strange photo I already showed you uh, the same year. Here's the today, this year's invitation, um, also covered with uh, Hebrew letters, but as you can see below, uh, the whole ceremony con uh, included only the mass and the uh, laying flowers on the grave family on the Cemetery, 
no uh, going to Karszlica, to Podówki, uh, Stone and no like Jewish Salem. Yet uh, another interesting artifact has been produced on the occasion, a death notice identical to the current funeral announcements. It has been placed in the dozen places in the public sphere of Miechów by, by Michał Biernacki himself. And it informed about the celebration of the anniversary of the murder, indicating simultaneously private and public character of the event. It was going to be a family celebration organized by a relative, but also by a mer mayor of Miechów, who is also um, like, uh, indicated as an organizer. Um, and all of the local community should feel invited. Uh, that this is the way we can read the presence of this uh, announcement in the public sphere. As let me hyper, uh, hyperbolize, every Pole is a member of Baronex family. That's a conclusion I draw from a conversation with one of the locals. Uh, when I asked him what are those signs, he responded to me uh, by telling the story of uh, Biernacki being related to Baranex and uh, he himself uh, appeared to be related to Baranex and he to told me about the Berskucha and this Jesuit in Krakow and it seemed like to be related to Baranex is a uh, must-have thing in the local biography. Mm, the mass was co-performed by two local priests, Ludwig Michalik from Hrasznica and Stanisław Kaposiński, chaplain from the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Miechów. Uh, it's the old photo, but the church is like the right one. <laughs> so I just wanted you to have this in your mind to imagine how it looks like. Mm. Latosiński is not only a priest, but also an author of many publications. Here are some of them, and the photo of the, like, one of my heroes. Um, and it was him who has given the sermon during the Mass. He also greets the participant, participants at the beginning. And here is uh, the transcription of his greeting. Setting a symbolic and ritual frame for what is about to happen. He juxtaposes the redemptory death of Jesus with the death of Baronek family, discreetly playing with the meaning of the sermon <coughs> Baronek, which in Polish stands for the lamp, a sacrificial animal from the Bible, and a trope for the Jesus himself. The Jews are left out of the equation. They are mentioned in this opening statement in this opening statement only as a passive object of the rescuer's uh, heroic deed. Whereas Slatoszynski explicitly <coughs> names the stake of Jesus Christ's suffering and death in the first sentence, it is less clear what is the purpose of the Baronet family sacrifice. One of the reasons is probably the fact that they have not yet been given the Servus Dei status as the Ulma family from Markova. It can be read between the lines um, of concluding remarks of um, Latoszynski. As I said, it's a kind of symbolic and theological frame of what he said during the Mass. And he's, uh, mm, yeah, he's admitting that he's uh, afraid of doing a theological mistake. Mm. He repeats here uh, in the conclusion <coughs> the remark about the possibility for the whole family, for the whole community to gain some graces from Baranex as <coughs> intercessors at the God's throne. At the beginning, he identified the most urgent of them as uh, peace and concord, that's the graces we need. Now he summarizes his speech by saying, mm, Catholic is not an anti Semite. It's on the beginning of his conclusion. The main argument of the sermon put inside those theological brackets addresses precisely this allegation, which seems to be a reason for the um, anxi anxiety and discard community as um, experiencing. Uh, argumentation of Latoszynski is based on the biblical readings scheduled for 15 May of 
2018 by the litur liturgical calendar. As you prob probably know, it is organized as a cycle of three main types of year, ABC, that defines the holiday readings and um, irregular weekdays. This year, on Thursday, the reading from the Old Testament told the story of negotiations between the Lord and the Moses, whether the chosen people should be punished for worshipping the golden calf or not. The Moses wins. To be um, short. In the New Testament reading, Jesus admonishes the Jews for not having faith in him, despite they know the scriptures that testifies on his behalf. As Moses was believed at the time to be the author of the Torah, he is presented as the main human authority the Jews should rely on. The set of quotations could be interpreted in the numerous, almost infinite manners, uh, even in the specific context of Polish-Jewish Jewish relations during the Second World War. I regret uh, to not have participated in the first ceremony organized by Bernatsky in Niebuch in 2012, because it has also been Thursday, the same like litur liturgical year, so the readings were identical. I would very much like to compare the sermon of Piotr Skucha, who once celebrated that Mass, with the one of Natoshinsky, uh, five years, six years later. Thanks to the book publication of Skucha's sermons and articles, we have a hint of what could have happened. This is the quotations from uh, Skucha's article on uh, the Second World mm -hmm. teaching of, on the Judaism. This biblical scholar, educated in Rome, from in Jeru and Jerusalem, um, stresses the need of topological interpretation, enriching one testament by the other, and paying respect to the Jewish part of the Christian tradition. He proposed to understand the rebellious behavior of the chosen people in the desert as a sign of moral <coughs> purification, and the desert as the catalyst for it. And you, as you can see, he writes down the things as you know, respect and love should be should be felt towards Jews who has been chosen by God to prepare the coming from, uh, of Christ and despite difficulties in acknowledging <laughs> him as their savior, they preserved everything that has been gradually, gradually rebuilt and given in the course of the preparation. So to understand ourselves, we have to understand this old testament. You know. um, Latoszynski, on the other hand, uh, refused to interpret the Bible topologically. He stresses the rupture between the Old and the New Testament Covenant in presenting what may uh, be called a Christian chauvinism that quickly became a Polish Catholic one. Um, and this is the citation. I don't want to take you to, to much of your time. So please just take a quick look at it. And I will summarize like, the, the rest of the sermon. <laughs> So I just uh, summarize what Latoszynski is saying, right? It's not my opinion, of course. Sorry, it's not my opinion. Jews were unfaithful to the covenant and not only refused to recognize Jesus, but also brutally killed him. So the Lord decided to start a new covenant with Christians, letting the Jews go their own path without his father's assistance. Actually, he passes this duty to Paul, and it appears. Because at first, the Jews settled mostly in Western Europe, but they were causing troubles there, and they were expelled, and found shelter in Poland, young country based on evangelical values. Even uh, when some ten tensions happened, the Poles were patient and didn't behave like the citizens of, of Western countries. Latoszynski's tale of Second World War may seem absurd. He accuses Jews of, of the lack of loyalty towards Poles after Nazi and communist invasions. He also states that Auschwitz war was built basically for Poles because Nazis, Nazis' priority was to destroy them. Uh, it can be explained only by the logic of tribal thinking. I suppose um, we are nothing but goods and all the evil comes from the outside and what's, more, what's, what's important we are the, um, uh, the in the center of, of the world. But just for understanding, this is not this is not a sermon on occasion of the anniversary. Yeah, it is. It is. Yes. On the uh, yes. during the mass yes. on the anniversary yes. of the murder of. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the point. Okay, okay. 
I'm very sorry if that wasn't clear. Yes. This is the guy who is educated in Jerusalem or the other one? Oh, no, this is the guy from educated in Jerusalem, like the cousin of Hucja Baranek, Piotr Spucha. And this is Latoszynski, who, uh, who has given the sermon uh, like in March 2018. And this is the sermon, yes. And this is not a bishop, the other one is a bishop. Yeah, the other one is a bishop. Okay, so I just wanted to conclude. Um, I wrote down some of like the answers that I think about. <coughs> the question of how does Catholic Church affect the way Jewish rescue is remembered in contemporary Poland. So, firstly, there are seven of them, about very brief one. Uh, first two is uh, pretty much what Alicia was saying, and it's uh, connected to this like central level of uh, how the church influences uh, Polish remembrance of the righteous. So the first thing is the construction of the national pantheon, right? The families uh, with kids, the Catholic families with kids are uh, like prefer preferably beatified as the paradigmatic um, righteous. And it's like uh, the influence of Catholic Church. The second thing, a uh, very interesting thing from Alicia's uh, um, presentation, this figure of a uh, victim and the sacrifice at the same time, and it was uh, clearly visible and in, in, uh, present in what I was referring to. It is a result, and it is resulting in greater value attributed to death than to life, <coughs> right? Both uh, Jewish and non-Jewish lives. Third uh, remark is on the ritual aspect of uh, how Catholic Church is um, influencing what is being done as the celebrations taking place are mostly in churches with Holy Mass as the main event. And the second thing, the graves uh, are established over Christian bodies and living Jews in a profane sphere. Uh, the other thing is that this passive <coughs> power of priests and bishops uh, can be used in various ways. The two figures that uh, played important role in commemorating Baronet family and uh, the science of Matoszynski um, represents different stances that can be, uh, and I think they can be labeled, maybe it's oversimplifying, but one can be labeled as pre Vaticanum Secundum and the other post Vaticanum Secundum. <laughs> well, uh, there is a whole uh, history of research of why Vaticanum Secundum is so. Um, Badly uh, received in Poland, so yeah, I won't go into that. Fifth <coughs> one, uh, the relation between kinship and religion is very important thing. And in Baranek's case, the um, agents, like the family agents be behind the commemoration ceremonies, are devoted Christians. That's a fact. So it also have something to do with how it looks like. The other one, uh, dealing with guilt. And it's a thing that I would like to research <coughs> further. Uh, it's maybe important that Mihov devotion to the Holy Sepulchre um, is connected with their um, focus on the question of guilt and redemption so much. But it's uh, just a Catholic question. Yeah. Okay, well, and the thing that should be said aloud is that the anti-Semitism is, is like religiously legitimized of this kind of uh, ceremonies in Poland. Okay, okay, I will finish this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Elena, thank you very much.